Hi, my name is Arkadiusz. Uh, I'm a DevOps engineer at Dev Graphics Programming. Currently, I'm leading a continuous integration testing of untrusted GPU code. Uh, it's an R&D project involving physical GPUs in PCI password. Uh, and in this talk, I'm going over how we use compute blitz filters to produce high quality MIP maps and the theory of sample images. So uh, the first question, uh, why should I care? So no GL generate MIP map. As we all know, there is no generic MIP map generation functions in Vulkan. Uh, the application is expected to load images with already pre-computed MIP maps. For runtime generation and the single pass desampler and upgrade over the usual big chain in most tutorials. Um, it converts the input structure as a user-defined two by two kernel, computing six map levels in shared memory, starting from a 64 by 64 grid per war group. However, it doesn't deal with non-power of two textures properly. Uh, for example, a three by three mid level will have a one by one above it, but SPD will down sample the two by two subregion to the one by one. It seems that aside from uh, NVIDIA texture tools, uh, there's no library for running high quality bleeding of non power of two textures. Uh, but here we might be wrong. So uh, if you know a library, please let us know. Um, so what cast us to explore this problem. So coming back, uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> what caused us to explore the problem? Uh, so basically, runtime loading of source texture assets. Uh, our users expect to throw in JPEG, PNG, XR at runtime, and for the MIP mapping to work well. Uh, building our own asset pipeline. Uh, unconstrained pixel manipulation in code is also useful without heavy cross process of cross library copies and conversions and mostly having to implement virtual texturing to path trace before bindless became ubiquitous. We also have an OpenGL path tracer, uh, which had to use virtual texturing to get around the issue that only NVIDIA GPUs allowed for non-dynamically uniform bindless texture handle usage. Uh, so here you can see how virtual texture page uh, gets used. Uh, so first we sample using virtual handle and UV relative to original texture. Then we translate uh, virtual handle UV and mid level tuple to physical page search. Virtual texturing impacts many constraints on the implementation. Uh, each page needs a border equal to half of the anisotropy level. So mid levels are disjointly stored. There is no hardware mid mapping. Uh, needs manual trinalium filtering. There is a special packing of the mid tail. Uh, and special staging on resident pages. Individual textures reserve as continuous rectangles in the page table. The page table has a full MIP pyramid, uh, interpret virtual coordinates as mortal codes on the Z or their curve with aligned allocations, which implies an implicit quad tree. So in that case, MIP maps need to round up the power of two. Uh, textures small and a half a page need to be upsampled. So NVIDIA actually proposed non-power of two textures that seal the MIP map resolutions for OpenGL in early 2000s. Uh, MIP map must be recomputed from scratch and your favorite high quality MIP level generation software doesn't make these. Uh, so here there is a um, regular MIP map chain. Uh, there's also our own and our power of two textures also have one more MIP level. Uh, Native sparse partially resident textures are still not great. So we might review this virtual texture implementation in Vulkan. Uh, bind commands are woefully slow, and especially on Windows. Sparse images have the same maximum resolution limits as non-sparse. So non-uniform EXT and descriptor indexing is a gift to humanity. Uh, and virtual texturing is still relevant for WebGPU, as long as it doesn't require bindless or description indexing. So uh, let's start with an uh, image processing recap. An image is usually represented as a set of textual, textual values aligned on a rectangular grid. Text cells the value of a function at a particular sample location. For simplicity of proof derivations later on the talk, we will think of the function's domains being the normalized texture coordinates. Uh, often the image is sampling of an actual continuous signal with infinite frequencies. So 
Now that an image can also be represented at 3D, then we need, obviously, to add a z-axis. Um, so we can view the discrete image uh, as a continuous function denoted as f, which is zero everywhere except at the pixel centers, uh, where those are delta impulses multiplied by the intensity of the pixel at position nm. So in general, texels are not boxes. But you don't have to repeat uh, Armed with this representation, we can now discuss what happens to the Fourier spectra of our image as it undergoes resampling. So, um, yeah, we need to revisit convolution theorem a bit. Uh, convolution operation is denoted as a circle in this presentation. So the multiplication of two periodic sequences in spatial domain is equivalent to the convolution in the frequency domain. Uh, and several interesting properties flow out of it. So we have like the shift, linearity, and stretch properties. And also, please keep the differential property at the back of your head for later. We'll come back to it. Uh, and hopefully, yeah, we'll get to the side. Uh, let's see. Uh, OK, now let's see how to get from infinite continuous to discrete and finite. For a continuous function for, for a domain uh, as a range, minimum of x, we can extend it to infinite by making it periodically, repeating outside. This makes the Fourier spectrum discrete as non-integer multiple frequencies will integrate to zero, but not finite, as you can still have infinitely high frequencies details. To go back to an, a periodic function with a finite domain and zero outside, we can construct its spectrum for a periodic version. The a periodic function is just a multiplication of the periodic function with a box function window. The multiplication in the spatial domain is also a convolution in a frequency domain. The spectrum of a box function is the sine C function with inversely proportional width. Um, convolution of sine C with a series of delta impulses produces tricks, which is why you can often see this in audacity. Okay. So we can also make our domain limited periodic function spectrum discrete by hand, but limiting the function. Let us multiply the spectrum of the function with a box function to cut off those highest frequencies. So this is equivalent to convolving the original function with science in the spatial domain. We will now discuss what happens to the Fourier spectra when warping and convolving the discrete image. Uh, spatial domain multiplication with a direct comb, also known as sub sac function, samples the function in a one over period around about, around about the way. Uh, the spectrum of a direct comb is a, another direct comb, but with inversely spaced impulses. This kind of spawns copies of the original spectrum one over period frequency units apart, um, which means the spectrum of your sampled function is periodic. And if you didn't band limit your function before sampling, the copies overlap, causing aliasing. Uh, so all I think of your image spectrum as a special representation being discrete and periodic. And now we have a warning. Uh, power structure diagrams uh, we often see are lies. Uh, Fourier transform produces complex numbers, and a discrete um, and discrete Fourier transform produces n outputs for n inputs. Conservation of entropy suggests we can have dimensional inflation. So for real value input, only half of the outputs should be independent of each other, which is actually the case as a Fourier transform of a real signal is an even symmetric function. Spectrums are usually illustrated with a cyclic shift. So uh, in this example on the right, we have a plot of the module output of DFT coefficients by their indices. Uh, and on the left, we have shifted the zero frequency component to the center of the spectrum. Take this into account for, for when we are talking about borders, padding, and zooming on the next slides. Shifts don't modify the magnitude of the spectrum, so we will skip over those. But we need to talk about spectral domain manipulation. So let's start with zooming first. Uh, here, we mean warping with the respect to the normalized UV coordinates. So the stretch property of the Fourier transform applies. When you zoom out, resolution increases. So careful choice of new padding pixels outside original spatial domain is required. Uh, repeat 
is equivalent to naive spectrum resampling. Clamp to border is the above plus sine C convolution. Uh, and on the other hand, when you zoom in, borders get corrupt. So original wavelengths migrate closer to the center with zero frequencies. And spectrum needs fewer samples. So again, resampling the subspectrum. Uh, Corrupting is a spatial domain multiplication with a box. So again, a spectral domain convolution with a sine C. Uh, so actually, our FFT convolution bloom uses uh, these frequency space properties. Okay, so now the resampling. Uh, period length in UV space won't change unless resolution does. So upsampling zooms out on the spectrum and allows this higher frequency content, empty border regions in spectrum. Choice of spatial interpolation affects the borders contents. Sine C leads to zeros. Nearest neighbor to ringing. Um, downsampling zooms in on the spectrum and allows migrating the frequencies higher outside of the original domain. But they don't just disappear. Uh, if you don't band limit, they will wrap around onto the lower ones and it will lead to classical aliasing. So I hope you are starting to see the pattern. Uh, zooming in special is equivalent to resampling the frequency and vice versa. And this is why I was so careful to avoid the word scaling here. Um, and now let's talk about ND rotation. Uh, rotation in 2D and 3D is not really possible uh, because the sample locations usually don't align after the rotation. A rotated source image in an axis aligned domain produces a different periodic tiling on an unbounded infinite domain. Then rotating the original's extended tiling. A continuous unbounded spectrum can be simply rotated, but the grid samples won't realign for most rotations. Artifacts introduced by wanted frequencies being removed or added. Original corners might be clipped outside domain, and new corners might be left uncovered by the original image inside the domain. So applying a rotation to a discrete spectrum will not produce an IDFT, which equals to the rotated discrete function. So the question now is, uh, why go into so such details? Uh, it's obvious we don't resample images with DFTs, uh, and there are reasons not to do so. Most of the kernels you would want to use are separable anyway. Uh, log n is still huge in comparison to a separable kernels gather footprint, also known as support. Uh, CPU and GPU caches love naive sequential access patterns, while FFT scrambles outputs like a Vander Corpus sequence. So we already shipped the path tracer using Nabla in 2021 with the virtual texturing using a CPU software bit image filter to generate MIP map pyramid with a arbitrary 1D resampling kernels. Uh, and there are a few like that. So we have the direct box, triangle, Gaussian, Mitchell, and Kaiser window CNC. Then one day we encountered a little bug. We have on the screen. So remember textures smaller than half a page need to be assembled to page size. So this is what upsampling of uh, one by one images to 64 by 64 with a mature kernel looks like. Mm. Okay, so the question is now what went wrong with the image? When you are doing a numerical convolution of image F with a kernel K, you expect the spectra to multiply to produce an image G, which is a convolution of F and K, K especially if the sampler used for out of the main tabs of F is repeat. So let's apply the rest of the convolution theorem. Uh, F is a periodic, but discrete. So the spectrum of F discrete, but it's periodic and not finite because it's sampled. Spectrum of F has a period of width input resolution. K is really not periodic or discrete, but it's an even and decaying function with width proportional to one of a output resolution. Spectrum of K has width proportional to output resolution, is continuous, a periodic, and probably infinite. Uh, spectrum of G is discrete, not periodic, and probably infinite. But when you are changing the sample locations, there is an implicit multiply by SAH with a 
one of the output resolution period, uh, which is a convolution in the frequency domain, actually. So now we have copies of signals based output resolution highs apart uh, in the spectrum. And the less K has sign C with width less than one of the input resolution convolved into it, copies will overlap and it will cause aliasing. Mm. And you can believe or not, but uh, you can get aliasing when up something. And this is exactly the case and what happened in the one by one to 64 by 64 case. And uh, the spectrum is supposed to be zero everywhere except at origin. But our win and output spectrum picks up some copies of the origin spike in the input spectrum. Uh, so let's think about what we actually want. One could say that we get fluctuations in the output because we have gaps in the input. Uh, as good and P. Hagbert in the non power of two mid-pack creation paper actually addresses this by having a separated reconstruction and resampling kernels. Uh, the reconstruction has a width of one of the input resolution, and the resampling has a width of one of the output resolution. It's been implemented in NVIDIA texture tools, but 10 filters are hard-coded for both. So why we can present the full theory. Convolution is associative. So you can convol F with convolution of your reconstruct and resample. Spectrum of reconstruct convolved with resample gets double window width. So width roughly proportional to minimum of input and output resolutions. Uh, and now your spectrum copies after something are far less pronounced, so we have are less aliasing. Uh, also, there, is, uh, there are no copies at all if you make reconstruct a sensei, but it might introduce fake ringing. However, it's still good for low dynamic range. Um, so that was a lot of theory for a simple fix, actually. And on our legacy path tracer branch, we fix the original single convolution update by using a G, which has a width of one of the maximum of input and output resolution. Um, so yeah, the discussion of fire spectrum was really needed here. Um, yeah, but actually we did implement a proper high performance implementation eventually, where we can use a G, which is convolution of two arbitrary width functions that can be analytically computed. Uh, so there's a Gauss and Gauss, sin C on sin C, and box on box. But then we went further and actually implemented the thing properly so you can mix and match the kernels and the above analyticals got faster as well. Mm. Yeah, and the uh, image up in Nabla. Uh, as you know, there is a lot of limits imposed by your physical device, which you should look out for in your applications. Uh, one of these constraints include the formats and other properties you can create your images with. Your loaded assets might not be in the format you can use on the CPU, uh, sorry, on the GPU. For example, 24-bit JPEGs without an alpha channel. A simple solution is to convert your assets in your build pipeline. Uh, if, you, if your framework of Nabla has the CPU functions to decode and encode pixel values between every single one of over 150 common uh, VK formats, you can convert the texture at runtime on CPU. The naive approach would require allocating CPU site memory for a fair copy of your mega already mega texture, possibly an even larger copy, as you can't cover the format to anything with smaller bit depth precision. Uh, our solution streaming covers the format of the texture blocks while copying them to the staging memory, and there is no need to additional allocations. For example, you could have 8-bit RGB asset and upload it that to a 8-bit BGRA, sorry, uh, wiki image, or even decode from an unsupported block compressed format. This is all implemented in the framework of our asset namespace, where a mutable iCPU counterpart exists for every iGPU object, uh, which is a wiki object uh, in the Vulkan backend. Uh, so an iCPU image is simply a recipe for creating wiki image and filling its content with copies of regions from iCPU buffer, which is a recipe uh, for creating a full VK buffer. And now the image filter app in Nabla. Nabla possesses a number of image filters which operate on iCPU images, and various filter types are supported. We have a few and 
the way that this Wizard Land Cover works, for example, is that our utility creates an iCPU image where regions are backed by a custom allocator, which is simply just a way to view an external void pointer as an iCPU buffer. In this case, the mapper GPU is staged in buffer memory itself. So we just invoke the convert or copy image filter using this temporary image as an output. And our framework supports all kinds of abuse like that. Uh, for example, you can mask as your pointer for a memory maps system I file as an asset, iCPU buffer, and a mapped video iGPU buffer, which is a VK buffer as a file system I file. And uh, the Nablus uh, Siblet image filter uh, has a lot of capabilities. So, yeah, there's a whole list. Uh, it's composed of his data and cover filters. Uh, output can have different format than input. It does a separate pass over each axis. Can even do a convolution in 3D. Uh, intermediate results stored after each step to a scratch buffer. And we have this paralyzed STD for, uh, with various policies. MSCD, uh, has local accumulation of convolution in doubles, supports clamp control, leverages static polymorphism for speed. So for instance, input and output format can be provided as template parameters and the decode get, in, get, in, oh, oh, sorry, get inlined into hot loops. And Swiss editors can be compiled time too. Uh, so accounts for when alpha being used as coverage. Careful handling of the alpha channel in MIP mapping. So consider M pixels rendered with super sampling, then averaging them to a single one. The result we expect depends on the semantics. For example, for alpha testing, it causes a bug where if you move further from the right, in this case, the coverage is going to break and the gate is going to seem more transparent. So for alpha testing, distribution and histogram changes, so that's the number of pixels passing the alpha test with subsequent MIP levels. So solution is scale the MIP levels alpha up and down to keep coverage percent constant. Uh, so for blending against background, we have primitive part approach and not primitive part approach. Uh, and in the case, it's horrible signatures and precision is due to division by average alpha. And it's just to multiply the pre-filled RGB value by average alpha when rendering. The polyface lookup table optimization. Uh, due to rational scaling, shifting a pixel in the output makes the input pixel align slightly differently relative to the output, which leads to distinct phases. Uh, every P samples the face repeats itself. Uh, this allows a lookup table per convolution kernel per axis to be pre-computed on the CPU, then get used by the filter implementation. P can be as large as large as maximum of input and output resolutions. For example, when one is 1023, another 1024. But because we usually convolve 2D and 3D images, uh, the lookup table consumes very little memory and can fit into L2 CPU or L1 GPU cache. Some kernels like SineC are expensive to evaluate. So fetching value from lookup table is faster. We can afford the kernel to be a convolution of arbitrary reconstruction and resampling functions because they are comparatively few values in the lookup table and we can compute them through numerical integration. Uh, the previously covered special cases of Gauss and Gauss, etc., are handled via C template specializations. Max support size is computed by taking the support of the convolution kernel whose width has been scaled to match the output sampling interval. Then converting to input image integer coordinates, not normalized and seen. Considerations for a GPU implementations are different. Uh, so do not want a separable dispatch per axis. Batches of compute bleed dispatches can be very large. For instance, because you need to recompute all maps in a scene at once. Uh, Allocating and synchronizing per axis pass intermediate output global scratch memory and it limits parallelism. Would need pipeline barrier between every pass on the same image. So Vulkan events split barrier spam. Uh, GPUs are much more parallel than CPUs, so might actually have more resident invocations than image scanlines. 
uh, do all three access at once in a single dispatch instead, store directly to output, but keep the convolution separable. Normalizations like alpha coverage adjustment require scratch memory and one or two extra dispatches. However, histograms are fixed size per image, depend on value back account. Uh, no separable prefix sum dispatch needed, small enough to be done redundantly in a workgroup. Transit and high precision, floating points, etc. Uh, frequent and detailed storage size is pro proportional to output resolution. Uh, and want to avoid double precision, like the plugin, leverage, <laughs> leverage free format conversions, so access the lookup table as uniform text above. Uh, time for some implementation details. Here are our precedent evocations mapped in a snake order to shared memory indices. We preload an input Texel patch into workgroup shared memory, which will produce an output patch. Then we issue a workgroup execution barrier. Then remap invocations to output Texels of an axis pass and compute the convolution as a gather operation. If there will be another pass, store result back in the shared memory. Otherwise, store straight to output image. There are wasted loads on the border of the cube where work groups overlap. As output needs to have the kernel support disubtracted. The kernel supports needs to be small and have an actual range limit. There are some fun potential optimizations we are about to try. Uh, register files and their can can help shared memory usage by using local pre private variables to perform the swap of shared memory contents for the price of one extra work group execution barrier. Vulkan storage image write without format feature lets you have a single pathway for all the bleating of images of identical spear V dimension. Bonus, uh, pick the first and second pass access to minimize intermediate output search. Output patch can be larger if each color channel is processed separately or half is used for intermediate storage. So you want to provide the blade as a single header and not as a single shader. And HSL 2021 most templates enables decoupling input output parameter storage from descriptor and packet layouts, descriptor binding. Aggressive inlining and constant expression elimination with DAO global identifiers, more than one instance possible. So the C++ functions for transcoding Texel blocks have been written many years ago. Uh, however, they are missing some features uh, like block compress format encoding due to unexpired patterns, only S3TC is expired so far, local optimums, in encoding errors are not best. So you might want to create a continue, co continuity between individual text blocks. Large search space, even when encoded for local optimum. We also miss planner formats uh, because we never use them. Uh, want a single header SHL implementation, which compiles a C++, but we need to avoid 8 bytes formats as a transit formats unless truly necessary. We will probably start with porting format enums and format strays, but it's a low priority goal. So coverage ranges, precision, etc. And at the end, we have a bonus round with high quality normal and derivative maps. We can smack a derivative operation in the middle of our resample G, which is gradient of F convolved with convolution of reconstruct a resample and then multiply it by the psi. But convolution is commutative as well. So the above is equivalent to single convolution bleed of F with K. Uh, the noted is a gradient of reconstruct and resample convolution or reconstruct convolved with gradient of resample. We have implemented derivative property to our templated Gaussian Gauss, sin C on sin C and other comps. So no longer feel uneasy about a 4,096 squared bump map, not producing a 4,095 squared output map are above using center differences. So this whole thing, uh, parts of it, uh, have been created by a few people. Uh, some of them are no working, no longer working with us. So uh, if there are any questions, uh, 
please uh, catch us on the break because I think I, I, I just, uh, the time is over. We have quite time for questions if anyone has one. Yeah, it's important. Yeah, we, we can catch us on break. Um, yeah. So th thank you very, very much.